I was a green card holder, a graduate student. I came to the United States when I was 15. I'm a New Yorker. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. My family are from Palestine. My name is Tahani Abushi. I'm an attorney here in New York City. My name is Nasreen Al Amin, and I'm originally from Sudan. I was doing research in a rural part of Sudan, and there were rumors that something like this could be signed. We were gearing up for something by Trump, but we didn't know what it was. His rhetoric towards the Muslim community, um, his hate and angst towards the Muslim community, that was undeniable, unquestionable. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Frankly, everything was so unclear. Um, and so that, that kind of uncertainty, I think, also made me feel like I wanted to come home. So I got on the next flight out from Khartoum. From Khartoum, I went to Bahrain, um, and then I caught a connecting flight to London. I didn't sleep, I, I couldn't eat, knowing that this executive order might get signed while we were on the plane, and I, I just didn't know what I was going to expect. I was driving back from Connecticut, and um, I heard that the ban had dropped. President Trump signing an executive order suspending immigration for 90 days from seven countries with ties to terrorism, all Muslim-majority nations. If there was a moment in time that I was created for, it was for this moment being an attorney, being a child of immigrants, being Muslim. If I can't do something about this right now, then what have I been gearing up for all this time? When we finally got off at JFK Airport, I followed the regular US citizen green card holder line, went to the machine where you put your green card in. You know, my picture came out with an X on it, and so I went to the immigration officer, and then he went to his supervisor. He said, you know, what should I do with this person? And he said, well, just process her like you would a normal green card holder. And as he was walking back, the supervisor said, well, actually, wait, wait a minute. Um, you have to take her in for further processing. I think we were probably um, the first people to get detained under the ban. <laughs> I first entered JFK, there was a massive amount of people. Signs, banners, it was really, really robust. It actually gave me chills. I have chills right now just talking about it because it was such a, a passionate response to this. I just made my way inside the Terminal 4 and I saw the beginnings of what eventually would be our headquarters. I kept asking throughout the night, like, what's going to happen? And I was told, you know, your guess is as good as mine. We don't know. I noticed that the officer was reading the, the language of the executive order. I'm assuming to get some direction on, on how to question us or on what to do. People would call us and say, I have a parent, a grandparent, or a child on the plane. And so we tracked the flight. We'd wait at the entrance of whatever terminal they were exiting. And if they didn't come out, after the flight cleared, we'd know, okay, they're in the back. I asked one of the officers um, if I could call a lawyer, and he said, you know, this is a, the border zone that we're in is a special jurisdiction, and we are both judge and lawyer in the space. He started asking me if I knew people with radical views, asked me about, like, who I was, what I did, where I had lived in the United States. At some point, they also searched our bags. <laughs> If the family hasn't heard from them three hours, four hours, six hours, we'd start to press Customs and Borders Protection. Eighth or ninth hour, we would then begin to draft petitions to the federal court requesting that they be released. At some point in the night, we were told that we were going to get transferred to a 24-hour holding area. We were escorted with armed guards. We were escorted out onto the tarmac and taken in this van. I had to put my hands against the wall. I was handcuffed. I thought, this probably means that I'm going to get deported. And I started crying. I just felt like, yeah, there was something about that moment that, that I felt like, OK, this is the, like, we just stepped a line, you know, crossed the line.
The detention lasted long enough for us to file, but not long enough for us to be heard by the court. They told me, you know, they had done an extensive background check on me and that they hadn't found anything, quote unquote, derogatory. I was told I could go, I could leave. I came out to an empty airport. It was like three or four in the morning, and um, my partner was there, um, and as, as was a friend who had come at three in the morning to bring me some food. I'm hurt for our community, not just the Muslim community, but the immigrant community. The attitude towards Muslims, it's not new. It just made me realize we've got so much more work to do. I want to love America. I consider this my home. But I can only love America if it loves me back. <laughs>